Wow, it's sterilization. You clicked on this and you got sterilization. Now, this is revolves around CST. So this type of YouTube page, at least this playlist, consists of CST types of questions. So we're going to go over briefly. You can see it on the screen. Yeah, I'm going to talk with it, but I'll pull up those areas so you can see it in more detail uh, as I'm talking about each area of sterilization. So this is a great review. It's revolved around CST for sterilization. I find most people have difficulty, difficulty in sterilization uh, when it comes towards uh, CST because they don't spend a lot of time in externships there, which they should. That's a little note. If you're at externships, spend some time in the sterile process and learn all the parameters, the times, the temperatures, and everything there is that you can because that's going to help you translate to um, the CST exam. That being said, we're going to jump right into uh, the sterilization kind of review. So follow along. If you stick through the process, I'll throw up some CST types of questions right in front of us like we normally do. We'll read the question. We'll review that question. I'll let you know what that answer is. If you want to push pause on that just to kind of give it some thought pattern, try to figure out that question, go ahead and do that. But just realize I will let you know the answers. I'm going to do about two or three questions in between this review. I'm going to keep it about 10 maybe 12 minutes long, so why don't you stay tuned. Hey, by the way, just like and subscribe before you start. It helps me personally out, personally out with trying to get that algorithm out there, trying to get information out there for all the students, right? Or anyone that's interested in surgical technology. So we're gonna start with sterilization. We're gonna start with up on this board here, and I'll put it up on the screen because you can see it. I'll kind of blow it up a little bit so you can see that. In this case, hopefully it's right there somewhere, right? We're going to talk about ETL, and as it's popping up on your screen, we're going to talk about it. What is ETL? ETL, it's ethane oxides. We're talking about a gas sterilization, right? What you should know about ETL when it comes to CST types of questions, it's very expensive. So there's questions revolved around sterilization. What's more economical, which, which can cost or which is cheap, which is not? So this one, if they ever come across a question, which type of sterilization is expensive? ETO is it, right? It has a lot of gas. It's very hard to maintain. So ETO, as you look along there, it says 30 to 80% humidity. Yeah, so what does it take for ethane oxide sterilization to work? It's humidity, right? 30 to 80%. I've seen a lot of percentages a little contradictive, but the one thing that's a good variable or is consistent with ETO is it needs humidity in order to work, right? Not steam, that's that's a liquid, right? We're talking about humidity, right? A gas kind of a formation of uh, that, right? We're talking about humidity and need for ETO. Looking down the list, as you guys can see that, you need instruments must be dry. So you ask yourself, why does that need to be dry, right? So if you look at some types of questions for ETO, uh, it's very, very toxic. So any kind of water particles, uh, it changes your DNA. It's very, uh, it causes cancer, so it's carthogenic. Uh, so it needs to be completely dry for that process, all the way to the part where it gets to the patient or yourself touching these instruments. So just remember, if any kind of a question that revolves around uh, this ETO need to be dry, why it's very toxic, right? or what type of sterilization needs the instruments to be very dry, it's ethane oxide. ETO or EO, kind of the same thing, ethane oxide, uh, okay? Uh, remember, dry is the key. Moving on to the next one. It's used for sensitive items, like scopes. So if, if it can't go in a steam sterilization, right, because certain lenses will be damaged, ethane oxide is an option, right? Probably an older option, but if that's all available, right, uh, there's some other options that we were talking about, Sterad and Stereo systems. But looking at that used for sensitive items like scopes. And kind of going down on that list, it says aerations for 10 or 8 to 10 hours. So that's the key. When you look at uh, CST types of questions that they read, what type of sterilization involves aeration and why? It's ethane oxide. And the answer is why. I kind of said it before, I kind of alluded it before, it's very, very toxic. We need to make sure things are very dry. Hence why it's eight to 10 hours. It's a very long process, right? 
Not to mention it's very toxic to people. So it's not something that's used in a lot of hospitals. I don't see it too much out there anymore. Not saying it's not, right? But aeration, eight to 10 hours is very key. It's at a lower, lower temperature. Now, some of the other steams are up at a very high temperature. In this case, it's low, 85 degrees comes to mind. So if you see CSD questions that involve which type of sterilization uses a lower type of temperature, it's always gonna be ethane oxide, okay? Now, what is a biological, biological indicator? Do you know what that is? And you kind of look on the list as I'm going down here, biological indicator. If you don't know what that is, you should know, right? It's the most reliable way to prove that something's been sterilized. Now think about it, you have a chemical indicator, you have a biological indicator. Don't get confused with those. Chemical indicators are like on your trays, the tape, they turn color. They just tell you that it's been through a process. The most reliable way through an autoclave is a biological. And they use bacteria, the bacillus family, right? Because that's hard to kill. So if we can kill the bacillus subtilis, yeah, it kind of tells you that everything's been sterilized, everything else is dead within that tray, right? So a biological indicator for gas uses the bacteria bacillus or B-sub, bacillus subtilis, and that's the type of bacteria they'll use. And that'll be on a question, right? What type of bacteria is used in a biological indicator for ethane oxide? Yeah, it's bacillus subtilis, okay? And on the very bottom, you see that it's very expensive, right? So you know some of these questions that are involved in, is this expensive or cheap? No, that's expensive, that's the answer, okay? Ethane oxide. All right, as I get the question, question number one, as I put it up on the screen here, which of the following methods of sterilization is most widely used, effective, and safest method of sterilization? All right, is it A, the steam sterilization, B, chemical sterilization, C, ethane oxide sterilization, or D, glutaraldehyde? Well, I just kind of told you, and if you didn't know this answer, you just didn't pay attention to anything I just said. Yeah, it's A, steam sterilization, right? Because we know this is a very expensive, and we're just, so that's a good prelude into this next type of thing. Steam sterilization is very, very uh, economical and effective, it's cheap. So A was your correct answer on that. As we jump in, as I pull up on the screen somewhere in my hand right there, uh, steam, yeah, it uses H2O. So you'll have some questions about what type of sterilization uses steam or H2O, which is water, you should know that steam, right? Uh, it's most economical, just like that question just alluded to. So you're looking at this, it says, it's kind of out of order, but we're talking about gravity displacement. There's two cycles in steam, right? Gravity displacement, and then there's pre-vacuum systems, at least to the book that we read. There's probably some more modern ways out there, but CST is a little behind on some questions. <laughs> so in this case, this review, we're talking about gravity displacement in the steam and a pre-vacuum. And there's some parameters you should know for gravity displacement. It uses cycles. What does that mean? And it's steam sterilization. I'll try to put a picture of it. Steam comes in from the top, goes out through the bottom, right? And then it goes up in peaks, ups and down, up and down up and down. What that really is referring to, it goes in cycles. Brings pressure up, brings pressure down. What that's referring to is it's trying to get these steam pockets, steam pushed into the most difficult areas. So for me, when I see gravity displacement, anything revolved around cycles is gravity displacement, right? And then there's some temperatures, right? It's 250, and at least in my uh, research, and about 15 PSI and I wouldn't go so much on the time, but 30 minutes typically is some answers that they're looking for. But definitely it's at a lower temperature than the pre-vacuum. Uh, it's 250, 15 pounds per square inch, which is PSI, right? Uh, we'll kind of come back to that immediate use sterilization, but pre-vacuum. So what is a pre-vacuum on a steam, right? It pushes all the pressure, pre-pressurizes the whole system. So the temperature is at a little bit higher temperature, 270 and it's a higher since there's more pressure involved it needs to be at a psi of 27. So to kind of recap a little bit gravity displacement 250 15 psi a pre-vacuum system 200 270 
at 27 psi. Okay, it's those are some numbers that are going to be revolved around some questions for sterilization, right? Kind of going back where it says I U S S. You should know what that stands for. It used to be called flash sterilization. Maybe some old timers still use it like me, uh, but it's immediate use sterilization. So what is that? Right, that's stuff that you need that's urgent for a case, not a convenience. If hospitals are flashing or using this immediate use sterilization often, that's a problem. You should only use this if you need it for an emergency, right? Typically, you should never do implants. So that's some questions evolved. Should you flash or use a uh, immediate use sterilization for implants? The answer is no. Only for immediate use, hence the name. Right? That's probably why they changed it. Flash was the way we used to use it, but it's only for emergent cases. Here's some parameters for questions, though. When you're trying to flash something in a hurry, there's three areas for time, for a minimum times. If it's unwrapped, so if I had a Kelly and I threw it in the tray, you should be at 270 for three minutes. And these are some questions on CST, at least some older questions. Four minutes if it's wrapped. I imagine that's an appeal pack, right? And if it's a lumen, which has a tubular aspect, Fraser, some kind of repurposed instrument that has a lumen of some kind, it's 10 minutes. So three minutes unwrapped, four minutes wrapped, 10 minutes for a lumen of some kind, right? Now, I just kind of jump into the biological indicator, which I told you before, it's the most reliable way to prove something's been sterilized. So that's important. We need a live bacteria of some kind. Ethane oxide was Bacillus subtilis. In this case, it's Bacillus sternothermo, a word we can't pronounce. No, it's sternothermo. I'm just going to put the word in there somewhere. Geobacillus but that is a, a type of Bacillus bacteria. There's two different kinds, right? Sterno. Bacillus sterno, and on the ethane oxide is the Bacillus subtilis. So realizes, uh, try to realize that those bacteria are used in those two systems. Those are definitely on CST all the time. Uh, in this case, this, the steam uses a Bowie Dick test. So I'm going to go over a CST question in about two seconds now. Let me read that question first and see if you know the answer. Um, and we'll jump into that right now. So question number two, as this little review goes along. Question number two, and I'll pull that up on the screen so you see it. A Bowie Dick test is A, concentration test, B, a biological test, C, a sterilization test, or D, a vacuum test. So think about it. A Bowie Dick test definitely is done once a day, and I would say typically in the beginning of the day. Now, what do we need for steam to work? We need pressure, we need time, we need temperature, right? Temperature, time, pressure. So the pressure comes in mind. A Bowie Dick test is going to make sure there's no leakages in the system. It's going to check the pressure within that autoclave. And that's done once a day, at least 24 hours. All right, jumping over to some other areas as you pop it up on the screen, you can kind of see it. We're looking at Sterad and Steris. In my opinion, uh, they use those or substituted for the ethane oxide nowadays. But some things that you should remember, and uh, you, hopefully you can see it a little bit better, that Sterad, remember bubbles, Sterad, uses hydroperoxide. And that's if you pour that on your skin, it bubbles. So for me, Sterad's bubbling, use it hydroperoxide. Uh, it's the agent is used in a Sterad system. Typically for rubber, uh, Band-Aids comes to mind, any kind of rubber activities really works well. Uh, I wouldn't put scopes too much in that. Uh, but remember, hydroperoxide is used with Sterad. And a Steri system that ends with an S is another thing that uses something called parasitic acid, as you can see on the screen there. Uh, and those are used for sensitive items like scopes. And then some of the questions say it's up to about 30 minutes, right? So just kind of recap, sterad, hydroperoxide, steris should always go, what kind of agent is used is parasitic acid for sensitive items like scopes. Now looking at the disinfectants, right? You have high level, intermediate level, low level, okay? Now this is what I want you to remember. These are just basic questions. These are all types of agents used. But if you have a high level disinfectant, the answer typically is Cydex. 
What's another name for Cydex? Gluter aldehyde. Now, some other questions involved in Cydex is how long is it soaked in? Now, it's a minimum of 20 minutes. This is some test questions I see, right? 20 minutes. So if you're bringing instruments back or you're in doing endoscopic and you have endoscopes, you're soaking this in for 20 minutes as you're cleaning it. It can be up to 10 hours. The only variable is if there's spores are present. Because that's probably the only thing that's going to kill spores based on the CST. So some questions is if there's spores around, it's up to 10 hours. If there is no spores in the, the question itself, wording-wise, we're going with 20 minutes. Got it? All right. Intermediate type of disinfectant. I'm going to say, give me an example of an intermediate disinfectant. You know, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, isopro isopropyl, which is a type of rubbing alcohol, uh, used as a typical intermediate type of disinfectant. And obviously a low level disinfectant, maybe your wipes in your room that you try to turn over rooms with. But some of the questions involving when would you use a low level disinfectant when there's low spores or none at all, right, typically. But I haven't seen too many questions about low level disinfectant, right? Well, I'll end with one more question as I find it. And hopefully this was beneficial for you. And you can wait to the end here for this question. But if you want to like and subscribe, add some comments in there, I uh, will appreciate that as I try to find my last question. I'm going to ask you a last question. It, I did go over this question. So hopefully you guys can get this right off the bat. All right, question number three. All right, moisture hydrates spores and bacteria interface in the sterilization process during an ethane oxide sterilization. The machine humidity should be kept between what? So you see that question, moistures can hydrate spores and bacteria interfere with sterilization process. During an ethane oxide sterilization, the machine humidity should be kept between what? A, 30 and 80%, B, 0 or 25%, C, 70 to 100%, or D, 5 to 10%. And I didn't lie. There's a question I found involving ethane oxide and humidity in the percentages. And if you remember, it was A, 30 to 80%. All right, thank you for joining me, guys. Hey, don't forget to like this video. Watch these other videos off to the side here. Spread the word. Uh, we really appreciate you guys watching. Hey, let me know some comments. I'm trying to get some more lab videos. We were just recently at a hospital. We watched the Mako draping and some good techniques for the robotic system. And I'll put that video right there for you guys to watch. Otherwise, thank you, and we'll try to see you next time.